workshop is warm thank god for that and we're gonna have an entire day like i used to do it's actually quite warm when i say quite warm yeah it's i don't know if it's gonna focus is it gonna focus in on it you can see the red bit there it's about 27. <laughs> uh, you just keep on adding logs to the fire and then all of a sudden it's just too much and then everything gets too hot it is hot in here any road oh, um videos 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 so someone asked in a comment they said um petrols and diesels and diesel and diesel run away that was the one someone asked why do diesels run away oh put it a different way how come petrols don't run away like diesels well um <sighs> it's, it's the number one right number one are these actually going to work number one is it's the difference in fuel right so petrol or petroleum and petroleum actually comes from geology it means oil giving rocks or oil from rocks this isn't what's going on here is it too warm <laughs> imagine that imagine if your pens don't work because it's too warm um that is actually better uh, petroleum gas whatever you want to call it or gas is different than diesel um yeah why so when they um get crude oil out of the ground they put it in what you call a fractional distillator or do fractional 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 distillation big tower all right and they have loads of pipes that feed off it at different levels and basically all that happens is that at the bottom here you pump your crude oil in ish and then there's heat right there's a fire in a sense usually heating elements at the bottom so your crude goes in fills the whole thing up and they never stop doing this right so tankers out at sea turn up and they either hook them up and pipe it or there's other ways to mess around but basically you just have crude going in crude going in into the bottom continuously and then as you heat it what happens is is all the because it's a mix um is crude oil it's not just one thing it's all of the hydrocarbons in a given range so the really light stuff the really small molecule stuff that's like that just say right like um propane stuff like that they float to the top uh, because they've got the energy to do so because they've been heated down in, in the middle stuff you have like kerosene right and basically stuff like diesel right and then it, down at the bottom you have stuff like bitumen Right, you have bitumen, basically tar, the, 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 thick, the thick, heavy stuff. And what they do is they continuously pump this out, right? So they just draw this out continuously. And this goes to pipes. This is all attached to pipes. And to make it really efficient, you've heated up this tower. To make it efficient, you just keep pumping it in. Just slowly, another tank turns up before you run out. So that's why they have these massive storage tanks. And then they have these towers, right? These distillators. And it's in fractions, you know what I mean? So it, it's it's split up basically like that. And as it goes to the top, you drain it off, all that kind of stuff. So let's just say what we call petrol or isooctane here, at this section here. It, and the thing is, it's a range. It's about there. So let's just say we look at this range in this tower we zoom in like this right and you've got your pipes going out here this region here and this region here and this region here and this region here this is 
just say something lighter. I don't know what's um, octane. It'd be pentane, wouldn't it? So you have like pentane here, right? Like that, and then down here, just say you have just say you have diesel. Just say, right? Um, so you have this band. So what you try and do is you try and take out this bit. And you, you siphon that as your isooctane, uh, octane, like that. Right? You try and siphon that bit off. And obviously, stuff's still moving, stuff's still sinking. It's still doing its thing because it's a continuous process. Right? So you just drain a bit off and wait till the system fills it. And you drain a bit, just constantly try and drain a bit off. It's a lot more sophisticated than this, but this is as much as I know. <laughs> so I know it's more sophisticated like this because there's basically... It's like, I think there's layers of screens as well and all this kind of nonsense. But basically, you get this, uh, it's a bit fuzzy here. This region here is, this region here is a bit where you, you're mixing the heavier and the lighter stuff. So you try and pull from the middle, right? Great. What does this mean? It basically means, just by knowing some of this, right, you can say, ah, so petrol is a smaller molecule, just say like that, right? And diesel, so this is your petrol, and diesel is a much larger molecule. And that's it, you're a petrol chemist. Yeah, you can now go and pick up your degree and off you go. So there's a difference between the two, right? Um, now, I'm not going to get into the whole argument about how much energy there is because there'd be more in there's more in here for because the, there's more bonds to break however it's also about density you can get a lot more of these packed into this and it, it, it it's about the same if you look at the tables for energy densities right um for anything right versus also energy density per volume when you look at all hydrocarbons the smaller you get, the more of them you can pack into the space. But the bigger ones, even though they're larger, they are larger. So because it's all just hydrocarbons, right? Because it's just a carbon, it's a carbon kind of with a hydrogen on, and it's multiple chains of them. It's pretty much the same, right? It's pre almost identical. They're all about about 45 46 around there when you all like i said when you take into consideration everything of how much you can pack everything in blah 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 so the two different types of fuels what is important to know about this whole thing because you might be going come on what has this got to do with diesel in is let's just say diesel is there our hard line is diesel right diesel there and let's just say our iso octane is there our petrol is there so that's our p line it's in that region Oil that you get in your car is here. And all of a sudden, you might notice, ah, <laughs> if you design an engine to run petrol, it'll run diesel, but it's not going to run oil. However, if you run diesel, it can run on oil and it can run on petrol. They're not designed to, but weirdly enough, the diesel is closer in properties to oil than it is the petrol, as in it's literally this distance it's closer than here yeah for instance um diesel acts more like an oily petrol you know what i mean where petrol will wash away or oil you know what i mean it's kind of fun times like that so now you've got all of that we then need to go through the whole ooh, good deal. we then need to go through the whole um quick very quick uh see fleece material it works a treat we have to go through a very quick uh, explanation of uh what uh, you know what dieseling is so now that we understand that the fuel is different and how it's different right now we can look at the actual process and say ah right so Okay, diesel's closer to oil than it is petrol. So what has that got to do with the price of monkeys? All right? Well, it's simple. In a... I still haven't done it. 
this is literally the fleece I was wearing earlier. <laughs> So, we have a piston, we have a conrod, like so, all is good, crank, crank throw, you get the point. And petrols have a cylinder head. And the cylinder like this yeah great fun and the petrol will inject or you know through carburation it'll be a fuel mixture that goes bang like right, burns the other thing that a uh, petrol has is a petrol has a throttle body right It'll have a throttle body which control it meters the amount of air that goes in the engine. If it's a carb system, you put air in, fuel go in. If it's a diesel, if it's a petrol injection, you can open your throttle as much as you want. If the ECU doesn't agree or whatever, then it, it, it controls how much. You can open your throttle and stuff, but really it's the injector that matters. So, you've got this throttle. So, if the throttle closes, that's it. All games stop. Even if you add fuel, all you're now going to do is flood it. That's all that's going to happen. It's not going to run. With a diesel, unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, diesels work on a different principle where what they do is they constantly take in, basically, as much air as they can. And it depends on the volumetric efficiency design of the engine. So what happens is, is a diesel's got rid of this. And every time it draws down, the valve's open and it tries. There's no, nothing else stopping it. It just floods in. More modern diesels do have throttle bodies for more emissions reasons. A bit of performance reasons. We'll just ignore them for a minute. So this diesel just breathes air. Yeah, and then when you inject the, if you've got a low throttle position or idle, it injects a tiny bit of fuel and that burns. All the air's there. And if you've got full throttle, you're giving it the beans. It gives it all as much diesel as it, it the end the design can take, and it tries to burn all of it. Great, wonderful. So you have this direct injector in here that's basically playing our throttle. So what we'll do is we'll just draw. The throttle sign. It looks more like a choke sign, but you get what I mean. This throttle butterfly. We'll just draw that on. That's what our diesel is doing. Is it is controlling the revs. It is controlling how much power the engine makes through the injector. The problem is, is that some clowns think it's a really good idea to put a turbo snail on this entire system for a diesel. So now it's cramming even more air in. So it doesn't matter. This injector controls everything that goes on. However, unfortunately, these diesels, uh, these turbos, require an oil feed. That's a line, by the way. That's in and out. In and out like that. Of oil. Of engine oil. And we know how close diesel and, and oil is to each other. And sometimes <laughs> these leak right these leak oil into the intake oh bollocks because that's a big problem because it doesn't matter what the injector does you can now take your foot off the throttle right and it doesn't matter this thing that's en it's engine oil it's been pumped this is the other problem it's been pumped out through the pump and it's feeding the turbo the turbo's leaking, and it's just going into the system. So it revs harder, and the harder it revs, the more it pumps. So the higher that, you know, basically it can just feed itself. So this, oops, I've got a red. This can be ignored. That doesn't matter now. All it's doing is the engine is revving faster and faster, and the pump is just pumping, 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 pumping. 
Of course, as this goes faster and faster and faster and faster, it's probably whatever the problem is, the leak is, pressures are going up, everything's becoming a disaster. It's drawing more in, so in a sense, it's trying to suck more out of these bearings because the way the turbo is, it's like a giant space onion, right? You get your turbo like this with its fins on and all that rubbish. I've done a bad drawing. Not going to win any prizes for that. And your seals are here with, you know, your bearings and stuff like that. This is in the centre. It's in the centre and this thing's flinging outwards. So it's there's a low pressure region, not on the outsides, basically in here. So it kind of wicks it out. It kind of wants to draw it out. Um, and fling it out, that's the worst thing. It wants to fling it out like this. And that's somewhere there is the intake, uh, the, this is the exit of the, 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 the impeller housing into the turbo. So it's not even helping itself. <laughs> Everything's working against it. And it just revs, and it just revs, and it revs. And this is the worst thing. The engine, it can intermittently run out of oil for a second because this isn't a perfect feed system. And the engine will just, you know, spool down. And then it'll whatever happened, it'll happen again. And it just starts leaking again. And it, it just keeps on going, basically. That's the problem. It's very difficult to stop. So the difference with, between a diesel and a petrol is, is that we have a valve in here. We have our butterfly valve with our petrol. So we can just shut the air off. So it wouldn't matter if, if the petrol engines would burn oil successfully without fouling the spark plug because that's one of the main things it fouls spark plugs and it turns into a big mess when it fouls the spark plugs this amount of oil what happens is it it um caught <laughs> it is easier to conduct oil through oil uh, conduct electricity through than through oil than air so you don't get this nice white spark right it just conducts it through the plug and it just bogs the plug down and then your ignition kind of stops right because that's the whole point the compression in a petrol isn't enough to basically cause these things to spontaneously combust so because of that you fouled your plug your plug is also cooling down that oil is just sat on there and it just stops right it just stops and you've got the throttle that's the other thing so even if you didn't have the throttle um a petrol would would intermittently run but it's not enough to run away so it's down to why diesels why petrols don't have diesel runaway is because of the fuel itself to the throttle body right or oh, basically it's it, you've got a choke for the air and what i mean by choke is you literally grab it by its neck and choke it to death and number three is the spark plugs right fouling so that is the basic reasons if you don't have a turbo, you've got no oil supply leaking into it. Oh, actually, in a sense, that's a lie, you do, because you have your valves, right? You have your valves, and they have valve stem seals, and this could leak oil, and they do. And all they do is, basically, to petrols is, it runs like shite, and it bogs down, and it gets worse and worse and worse, and you get really sooty exhaust, and you go, what the fuck is going on? And it just basically makes things worse. It doesn't just run away and rev to the high heavens until your crank drops out the bottom of your engine. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.